Um, my colleague asked me to talk about the reactivity that, that I have done in the last 10 years. And then I figured out um, understanding reactivity is much more interesting. So I talk about how to correlate the electron structure with the reactivity. The first one is start from very basic idea how to understand reactivity, how to optimize the geometry and so on and all the things I, I put in the first section talk about the technicals, how to locate the transition state, something else with the orchestra. Okay, the understanding of transition state <laughs> Now it's much better. <laughs> um, with our starting point is still the transition state theory. That one in the transition state theory, one assumes that the the reactant A and B pass through a specific geometric arrangement, so that's a so-called transition state before decaying to the product C and D. This is a simple picture. And then in the bone up hammer observation, the, the stable molecule like the product and the reactant has to correspond to the local minimum of the transition of the potential energy surface. And then the, the chemical reaction can be renewed as the moving of the, of the nuclei from one local minimum to another with the chemical resistance will be the low energy pathway. And then that's the all knowing that is the annulus formula in that way. I think that it just gives you the basics when we talk about the same things. And then the, in the quantum mechanics or quantum chemistry, maybe you all can, they deal with the magnetic dimension system as a, as a friend talked about it, but the three and minus six dimension potential energy surface. And then we, we can, can, we can Identify the local minimum. I need to add a laser point. We have the local minimum. We identify local minimum by calculate the certain derivatives of the of the energy respect to the displacement and actually the normal coordinate. And then all the all the second derivatives positive that give rise to the positive frequency. And then for the transition state, as I show here, you have uh, you, you the climb up here in this way. If you look, think about the parabola, you y y equal to a x, and the a is minus. In this case, you in this case, this is the 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 first constant is this a, and then you divide with the calculated frequency, you get an imaginary frequency. And then, and then the transition states correspond to the first order center point. It means only one of these second directives is negative. The rest of them are, are positive. It means you only climb, climb up one here, not two. You can climb one here. And then, in the technically, we want to calculate the transition state. Okay. This one is error. Um, um, actually, locating the transition state is not an easy job. Sometimes you need to spend a lot of time and effort. You need more patience for that. And um, I would suggest you, according to our work, uh, we have several things I can share with you. First thing, you need to run a relaxed surface scan. Most of people have tried these things. So called, what is relaxed surface scan? We take a so called key reaction coordinate, we figure out which bond is formed, which bond is break, and then you take the bound distance of this bond. And then you fix the bound distance of them, and then you optimize the geometry of the rest of the, all the coordinates. Now, this is kind of give you the feeling of the transition of the potential energy, so-called mapping the surface, the first step. And then, 
you run the frequency calculations as the highest energy geometry, and then you ideally you can find one emerging of one mode with emerging of frequency, and then you look at this mode. To look at this mode, you find out the correct mode that connect, connected your reactant and the product, and then you get a good initial guess for your job, for the um, transition state location. And then, you, in, at this step, you run the real transition state geometry optimization, but you need to read the hazards you get it from. You, add, you ask the program and ORCA to follow the mode that you really break and then form or connect the, that mode that really connects your reactant and the product. And then at the next step, you need, the next step, you need to run a frequency calculation again to, to verify whether you got the right or wrong transition state. In most, sometimes you get the second or the second or the set point. They have two modes with uh, uh, both have the emerging frequencies. Okay. Mm. The first question I want to talk with you is how to identify, how can one identify this relation coordinate, as I mentioned to you. And uh, most of the things we, we just guess, speculate, using our calculation. And then the, the things, the two examples I've discussed with you today is nucleophilic attack of the thin minor anion attack this, this carbonyl compound. And then the, the, the product you know, you, form, you want to form this CC bar, so you can scan this CC bar, right? The distance of this one, you, you put them in this two molecule, you, you several three hydrogen, for example, and then you put the, you scan the CC bar distance, maybe you change by n, one n, point one n strong at each step. And then the second reaction I discussed with you is hydrogen transfer by hydroxyl radical. This, this, the product is the CH3 alkyl radical and the water. So you, in, this, in this reaction, you will form water, you can scan the OH bar. Okay. In most cases, it's work. But the, in our case, we, we have some tricky case. We want to identify a kind of, a, we want to enumerate all the possible pathways for our given reaction. In that case, you, this is one step further, you need to compare the joint structure. I have an example to talk about later. Um, and then, the, once you get a transition state, how do you categorize? This is uh, the transition that you want. The first thing is, actually, if the outcome uh, works, finish, uh, terminated normally, so-called, and then the job, the, the, the first gradient, uh, the gradient, the first order derivative is close to zero, you really come to this top point. And then, this, and then you look at the, this is judged by your, depends on completely your chemical intuition. You have to look at the, this transition state chemical makes sense. And then you, you look at your output, your frequency, the last step, variation step, frequency calculation, and then you find out one and the only one emergent of, one mode with emergent of frequency. And then the, the things we usually did in my lab, we look, usually look at the emergent of frequency that is really connected to the bound, that is really connected to the product and the, 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 the reactant and the product. And the, I have to give you this. Seven examples in the following. Okay, let, let us try to understand this simple reaction. This is nucleophilic attack on this carbonyl compound. And then we we run the we first run the real life surface scan. You can you can start from either point from the product from product or from additional products from product or from reactant. Um, our experience tells me sometimes this, this, this starting from the products is slightly easier. And then because you because you don't know how to align these two fragments in the proper way sometimes. That is that is some trick they, they want to know. And then the input file as I show you here, for the real access scan, 
and then I, I, most of the things you we scan this bar distance that is uh, between the atom one and the atom zero. In our case, is uh, this. I think uh, sorry, it's this CC bar, and uh, then and and then that is we 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 give an example. Actually, we don't need thirty step. We scan the bar distance. This CC bar distance from one point five angstrom to five angstrom in thirty steps. So we have very good pattern geometry surface. And then, based, and then we take the highest energy geometry and then calculate the frequency and then ask, ask actually, you, you, this is a simple case, you only have one emergent mode. And then ask the program follow the mode, that is we, our program to start counting everything starting from zero, the first mode. That, that, that means we have the, probably have some emergent frequency. And then we, and then we optimize the geometry. And then that is you want to check and to look at these kind of things. You have to know that from the I think from the vibration spectroscopy, look at this version of model. Okay. But uh, somehow a technical issue I think I have was to solve to you. I talk about what the trick we have did and uh, everything. We, we haven't done any of the other tricks and as far as I know, <laughs> my colleagues did something like that. But one thing is uh, from the camps, uh, for other camps, but I think our, our task is not just to calculate something, we just want to understand something. And then most of the things how to interpret the data in the literature is compare the so-called barrier heights of among different uh, possible reaction pathways and uh, give rise to and then make a conclusion that this pathway is possible, that pathway is energetically not that favorable. But then, as I mentioned here, the primary goal of the of computational chemistry is, is however not to provide numbers but provide the understanding, right? And then Actually, this is to give you the many insights on how to improve your system, how to understand and rationalize the trend of your reaction path. And then, our starting point to understand the reactivity comes starting from the kind of assumption that the, we believe that chemical reactivity is intimately correlated with the draw structure. So we need to understand the electron structure and then we can understand reactivity. This is our strategy. Maybe you're better. Um, we start from very simple things of function molecular orbital theory. If you take the second second order perturbation, second order second order perturbation theory, and then you you can you can calculate the formulate the energy change when the two molecular impact with each other. The energy change is somehow described by these three terms. The details you can find in this Jensen's book. And then I just point out several things. The first term, this is uh, represents the repulsion between the occupied orbitals. This is corresponding to our chemical language of chemical language of the steric effect. Steric effect. And then the second thing is the charge, charge interaction between two molecules. And the third term is somehow is the most important thing that is describe the interaction of your occupied molecule, occupied molecular orbital on one molecule and index with an unoccupied virtual orbital in the in another in another molecule. One thing is that um, I believe many people know that interaction of two of two occupied orbital has no energy gain for that because your bounding and the anti bounding orbital are both occupied. You have now you have four electrons, both are located in two orbitals, interact with each other, and then you have, you have four electrons that occupy the bounding and the anti bounding orbital, and then there's no energy gain from that from this interaction. That is why it's a helium diamond does not exist. And then, so that is described this, 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 this occupied, this orbital interaction, and the most function of molecular orbital believes that the interaction between the homo and the lumbo dominant this term, that is this term, and then because of the, this energy denominator, that's the, in the other step. And, uh, and uh, this is a very crude approximation, but it's neither a ton of 
uh, chemical insights from them. I can give several examples and then start from this thing. The next first understand the reaction we talked about just now. This nuclear failure can accompany a compound. And then now, this reaction is the is involving electron transfer from the from the from actually from the home of the this cyanide anion into the lumen of this CO pi star antibody options actually is lumen of this compound. And then so that is the first look at it. this electron transfer process is this is electron acceptor orbit that we talk about later. And then we look at the lumen. And then you find out which one is the favorite bonding reaction site. This is easy to identify. You, you compare the weight of this of carbon and the um, oxygen. The weight and here uh, the carbon is dominant of this orbital. It, it can easily overlap with this guy. And then it means that the bond, the bond form, formation at the carbon side is much more favorable and then as the, the bound information and the oxygen. So in this case, we can determine the, the C comes, carbon is the reaction site. This is what you have done, you have understand that. And then this is not things, more cruel things then. Yeah. The experiment is like like always, always mention that once you have a very low reactivity for the lipophilic attack of the CO double bond, one way you can, one trick you can try is to add some new Lewis acid into the system, as I talked about, as I'm analyzing, I want to analyze with you. What happened there? Usually adding the Lewis acid speed up reaction, this is the, the experiment findings. Method. And then what we have found out there, the situation is the same, but so once you in that uh, Lewis acid of potassium here with the carbon, with the CO double bond, and probably in that with the terminal oxygen. And then in this way, you lower the, the you can believe that, you can you lower the energy of the oxygen PR. Right? Because, um, because you increase, you formally you can see that's the increase the effect of nuclear charge of the oxygen. And by the way, one question before I, I make this. I should discuss it here. Let me, uh, sorry. Um, so everybody knows this kind of map or MO diagram, but, uh, but one, thing is, uh, one, one difficulty when you make these things you have to, is uh, you don't know which carbon, you want to know, carbon, carbon P orbital has higher energy than this guy, or the oxygen P orbital has low energy. One, this is easy to identify according to the effect of nuclear charge or electronegativity. So P oxygen has the oxygen has a higher charge nucleus and so the P orbital has no energy. So one single rule to keep in mind is that I also talk to the students. Your your pi star, pi orbital has a large weight from the oxygen. And uh, that's the way I show you. And then the antibody orbital has the clutch weight of the carbon center. This is what is to keep in mind is lower gets lower, higher gets higher. That is the case. Yeah. And once, once you add the Lewis atoms here, you lower the energy of this P orbital, and then you, so your, your bonding pi orbital gets more oxygen character, and then your antibody orbital gets more carbon character. This is the favorite of your bonding, right? You have you bound one, you want to form the bond between the, this carbon and the cyanide, and then you and then simultaneously you you add this guy, you add this Lewis acid, you lower the energy of the lumen, and then you somehow speed up your electron transfer into this this pi star orbital. That is what I summarized here. So you have adding the Lewis acid, you lower the the energy of the electron accepting orbital and then, and then speed up the electron transfer. And secondly, you increase the, increase the weight of the carbon that's a facility bond formation. That is the classical explanation from the function molecular orbital theory. Okay. 
So motivated by the success of the functional molecular optical theory, we think about how to understand this reaction. Okay, we look at the orbitals. Yes, as I show you here, and then the question you immediately want to ask me is this one. So which orbital is relevant to the reaction? Somehow, because you, because in this kind, in this regard, we strongly suggest people looking at the localized orbitals, and then. Now you find that you are players in this game. Now definitely, in all this, all this case, you have a four stage bond that somehow mix together. In this, in, when you look at the things that like localized molecular orbital, and then you have uh, three well defined sigma stage bond. That's that's one of these guys. One of these guys is the player in, of this game, and then another one is. Uh, so more, that's a single occupied orbital of this oxyl, like, And the one thing I need to emphasize, uh, you transform the canonical orbital, so that is a canonical orbital that's generated by storing our GPW file, it has the same content with the localized orbital. The, between them is just, uh, we have the camera adoption, usually transformation, but the, all the properties are the same. That's, we have the same content of physics. Okay, so we look at this. This is a, something like a, you look at the the same people, but you from a different perspective. All those things are we look at the same thing. We don't change anything. Okay, the 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 input I put here something I think that's a quite useful for that people to know this technique. That's a quite interest, quite useful to interpret the chemical bonding of the molecule. And somehow you you need to write a specific input for your OCA dash lock, and then this is the, your your input your name of your GPW double files and output 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 GPW double files whatever is here, and for the specific for the search for methane we found the one stronger localized amount of the couple one is at the four uh, four. Um, bound the center of the stage bound, that's I show you here. And then now we, we know the player of other games, and then we, know, we, we try to understand the reactivity of them. We did the same things as I talked before. And then for the transition state, I want to point out only one, two things. For the transition, the stage bound distance is 1.3, 1.3. And then also the bound is the typical CH bound and the OH bound is so close to one, one electron somewhere. And then th th this makes sense because in a transition state, uh, somehow the CH bound try tend to be, tend to be cleave and the OH bound want to form. And that's okay. This this the geometric features that make our make sense. One thing I don't understand is this one. This. CHO is kind of a linear arrangement. And then when we, when we look at that, to understand that we, we analyze the electron structure as a transition state. Sorry. That's what what. We, we, we know as a starting point, we have a doubly occupied switch band, the single occupied the, um, Kind of oxygen p orbital, and then they interact with each other to generate a pair of three centered orbital. And now we have a three three electron in two orbitals, so the bonding partners get doubly occupied and the single occupied. Sing the the anti bonding partner gets singly occupied. And then because of this interaction, this is a kind of a covalent interaction. You have some optimal geometry to make that. So the optimal geometry is some kind of a linear arrangement. And then I need to ask you for attention for that because this is a this kind of a orbital interaction give you the give you the fingerprint to differentiate to differentiate. H atom transfers we discussed here, and then the proton couple here to transfer. We design, or we have, to, we, sorry, we have, we want to make an example to exercise to to show this point, but we haven't succeeded to do that. Oh. 
I will talk about, I will come to this point later. This is uh, the sage on the stretch. Does that make sense? Okay, now in this specific case, kind of the function molecular orbital is, does not work. When we think about the different way to think of, to understand the reactivity, that's what I did in the last 10 years. Um, since uh, I assume that, we assume that the chemical reaction can be visually can be think about as the electron transfer process and then couple to the bond formation and breakage. It's simply the electron transfer process. And in terms of this kind of electron transfer process, there are only two ways to cleave a bond. And one way I call it is oxidative cleavage is similar to the organomagnetic people like to call. The removing, actually once, this is the removing the electron in the bonding orbital, Sage bond activation is one of the typical examples for that. You remove one of the sage bond electron, and then you break this sage bond, and then you form the carbon center alkyl radical. And then the, the, this nucleophilic attack on, of the carbon group is also is another type. It's called a, I call it reductive cleavage. You populate the electron into antibody orbital, and also cleave this bond. This is. And based on this thinking, we think about that there are two ways to to modulate the reactivity. Once you the first the most important thing that we found out is you change the energy gap between the electron donation orbital and the electron accepting orbital. Because this is the transfer process, you make this gap as short as as low as possible at the speed up of the reaction. And then another thing that that's the key point here is the overlap. You want to make a bond to compensate the geometric changes in the reaction, and then you want to make a large overlap. That is the function operator has always said the same thing. So this you look at you you want to look at these two players, and then you figure out how they overlap, and then you can generate the initial gas for your for your geometry for the transition state geometry. That's the way we thought about it, and then you can determine the reaction side, and then that's what we finish. Okay. The the idea following this idea we, we think about we need to find the player of our reaction. The, the way we do we the the answer for this question actually we need to first understand the reaction at the molecular level and then we go to the orbital level. We first the uh, you need to identify in your reaction which molecules get reduced or get oxidized, which one is the electron acceptor, which one is the electron donor. And in most cases, we believe that electrophile acid reduction is the electron acceptor, nucleophile base oxidant is the electron donor. And then, once you know these things, which molecule gets reduced, which one in this case get oxidized, and then you go to you you go to one step further to to identify your player at the orbital level. Okay, for the electron receptor, your anti bonding orbital of the target bond being cleave is the electron acceptor, the electron acceptor orbital. And then for the electron donor, the bonding orbital of the target bond being cleave is electron donation orbital. The example I still I use all these examples of that. The nucleophilic of this reaction, so the CN is definitely nucleophile, everybody believes that's true. No pair of the carbon, this cyanide and anion function as an electron don donation orbital, and then the pi star orbital of the CO serves the electron acceptor, electron accepting orbital. Another case we talk about just now is hydrogen, hydrogen atom transfer of the massing. In this case, clearly, hydroxyl radical is electron five. And then singly occupied the P orbital serves as the electron acceptor, and then the CH sigma bond serves as the electron donation orbital. That is, that is things make it clear. Okay, based on this, Based on this assumption of hypothesis, so we, we can understand the things even better. So in the reaction, we want to we want to achieve this electron transfer. In most of cases, something like the sage bond oxidation. Sage sigma bond has extremely low energy, as we know. This is very strong bonding in the world. And so, so the, your, you want 
your, your reaction coordinate is definitely clear. It's, um, it's an elongated the search bound. In this way, you wake the you wake the search bound bonding orbital because you wake the bonding interaction and then increase the energy of the electron donor. And then that's what we talk about. It. And then and then you speed up the reaction. And then, so the barrier actually comes from the the geometric distortions to achieve this electron transfer. We have found out in that most in most cases actually. And then the nuclear phoenix then is the same thing, so you elongate the seal bar, but now you have a your seal pi star of the electron donor, electron separator. So this pi star, but you want to elongate it, you you lower the energy of there. Because you now you have you have your, your electron at something orbital is a pi x pi star. Okay. Um, I summarize what we have learned there in the recent paper here. And then we we look at the chemical reaction in terms of the electron transfer. The first thing is we identify which orbital is electron accepting orbital, which one is the electron domination orbital. And then we think about it, the transition geometry, the transition state geometry, whatever, that is in fact this overlap between them makes them, makes them up, have the maximum overlap and they achieve the optimal geometry. Okay. And then we, we, we somehow need to analyze the draw structure along the path, along the reaction pathway, and then find out what's going on. In most of cases, it's work. And then, uh, that's things I need to talk about is what we understand before, I suggest we speculate the reactivity based on the reactant. This is, uh, in the literature, we have talked about many things about the better elements for many for example, this we use the we under we use we use the draw structure or thermodynamics of the reaction to correlate the thermodynamics with the kinetics. The way we sort of actually this chemically somehow makes sense. The more exothermic reaction we have a lower barrier and the more endothermic reaction and vice versa. And then we correlate a series of reactions and then there was different driving force, we call it the driving force. And the higher driving force, no barrier. That is the most of the case that this simple principle work. But once, once it's in my work, we found out that there are many, many exceptions for that. One typical example is oxygen activation we have talked about. And then most of most of people drive a car, know this can happen. All these things have an extremely high by driving force, but the reaction is so slow because the because the problem is that the the, the, the ox, oxygen atom has triple ground state and the your product is a single atom. And then this is a spin forbidden reaction. So we have the very strong um, kinetic barrier to overcome, although this reaction is a uh, of highly endothermic and exothermic. exothermic. So, that, so once you want to use that principle, you have to check. You have to check carefully. I have an example for that if I have time to cover that. Okay, another thing is the Hohmann postulate that's also using frequently appear in the literature. That is correlated the, the thermodynamics and with the transition state geometry. If the reaction is uh, strongly endothermic, and then the product, the, the transition, is, uh, transition state geometry is very similar to the reactant. On the other, on the another stream, once the reaction is extremely, the third one, I got trouble. Yeah, and it's extremely endothermic, and then the transition state geometry is very similar to the product. And in this case. Yeah, that's what everyone would like. This is kind of a postulate. Never prove that that's true. And we found that sometimes, yes, it's not a, that works very well. But uh, I should mention here because mm, pay attention on that. And then this one, I have a talk about a lot of vibrational spectroscopy, kinetic isotope effects as well of the isotope effects. You, Usually we use to identify the 
we want to prove that the stage bound activation or or whatever transformation that involves the hydrogen atom transfer is the rate determined step. This is quite a useful way. The the reason behind it, the once you change the stage bound E C D and then the origin comes actually from the different uh, viewpoint energy of the C D and the CH1, as I mentioned, and uh, here and here. Yeah. And uh, that is easy to understand. At the transition state, because your stage bound get cleave, and then so the so the force constant gets lower, and then but the CH C D bound get gets the influence gets a too high step. You can believe that, you can easily to think about it that way. Once your transition state, in the transition state, your stage bound or CD bound is completely cleave. And then in, in this case, these two lines are overlap to each other. Because there's no stage bound at all. First continent is zero. And then that is purely depends on the different uh, zero point energy of this CD and the stage bound. That is the case here. But this, this technique has been frequently why they using identify the transition state uh, involving the edge and transfer proton transfer somehow? Because the, you change the proton to deuterium and you change the uh, mass by factor of two. Mm, now I come to a little bit to our real world. Um, we spend a lot of years to understand the reactivity involving transition metals, and then the transition metals is not an easy case to deal with somehow. I, I talk about, I need to talk about something. Uh, first thing is I need to, you, you want to understand reactivity. And then our strategy to understand the jaw structure, the way to understand the jaw structure is to cover this subsection. Uh, we have time, yeah. Um, in, in the most of cases, people talk about the formal oxidation state and the jaw structure, the yeah, physical oxidation state. In, uh, we prefer, this kind of thinking. This is a physical oxidation state is completely related to some, to your DN configuration. Um, you that's what what is you what you by what means you can take to identify how many D electron in your metal center and then based on that D electron configuration you can get the uh, the oxidation state of metal center. That is, a, for example, you have, you have a D4 center, you have an R5, and then you have D3 center, you have R4. So if D4 center is R4, D3 center is R5. Most of the cases are coincidence. But um, in, in my cases, most times are different. Because we talk about a single electron transfer reaction, especially. Uh, people are working here on lung innocent ligands based on uh, you also have the same problem like that. Computationally, as one would have mentioned just now, assigning the physical oxidation stage is a f amount to, equivalent to counting the electron, how many d electron in the d in, in the d based molecular orbital. That gives rise to d n configuration. Based on that, you can know the oxidation state, the local spin state, and the, and the, on the metal and the ligand can be deduced by the how many single occupied orbital based on the ligand and the metal. That is straight strong, also straightforward. The most last case we have met is the, the bond is strongly covalent. And in that case, in this case, is, you have a half contribution from the D orbital, half from the metal and half from the ligand. There's no way to define the, the oxidation state of the metal and the and then we try experimentally to line oxidation state. That's, that, that's also clear as well. Um, I think we have we have met this kind of system many, many times to so talk about it. This is a typical thing in magnetochemistry. This is a spin coupled the exchange coupled the copper dimer. In this case we we strong we we have developed a so-called broken symmetry function. I think the boss has mentioned it. Right? I don't know. And then the, how to interpret the chemical things? I just uh, I forgot all the theory. I let us talk about how to how to look at the uh, draw structure of that. And then we recommended to use so-called corresponding optical transformation. 
This one we transform the alpha and the beta set independently, and then we try to find one from the alpha set, which match the match the one in the beta set as much as possible. That indicate we calculate the overlap between the orbitals. We try to optimize the the overlap between them. The way for this copper dimer, your chemical intuition immediately tells you that the single single occupied electron will occupy d square minus y square orbital because this is square pyramid, a square planet geometry, d nine system, and then one electron in on one center based on one copper center and another one located on the other center. This is exactly true. And then the nice thing is the the overlap between them is can be quantified as the interaction between the stress. The large overlap the, the strong interchange interaction. Okay, we we'll make the, all of the things together. This is our trick to understand the electron structure, how to make that picture and how that works. Many people ask me the same problem. The first thing is we need to identify whether your system is spin couple system like copper diamond or the pure spin system like the classic weather type of penta arco iron fox so hexo arco iron ferrous center or whatever. There are two there are three criteria as far as I know. The first once you have a spin couple system, you your spin square expectation value is significant to get deviated from ideal value. You have extremely large spin contaminant so called, but they are actually there are real physics behind it. And then if you look at the we we have we implemented the so called unrestricted natural model and then you can find the occupation numbers of this spin coupled pair has uh, has at least one pair that is uh, one is uh, larger than point one less than one and another guy is larger than one and less than one point nine eight. And then we, we, the most straightforward way in our, in all kinds, to look at the always trick corresponding object. Let's just I show you the overlap in that case is point a, sorry, point, point three something. Okay, okay. That's why. And then you, once you differentiate these two things, and then you can, you you can you know how to draw the picture. That's how I'm gonna show you later. Firstly, we, another thing we, we like to use is the so-called primary restrictive orbital. And then, because in most of cases, it's very hard to identify the somal, normal, and the verbal, just double occupied, single occupied, and virtual verbal. And then the collective orbital has the trouble there. I, I have no time to touch that. But we have designers exercise on that. So transform from canonical orbital to quantum restricted orbital is something since you transform your unrestricted hydrofocal solution into the restricted open open shear restricted open shear harmonic uh, hydrofocal solution. And then in this case you can really identify which orbital is doubly occupied, which orbital is singly occupied, which one is unoccupied. And in this because the in terms of understanding of this is something is eventually comes Come at the end is counting the electron numbers on the metal and the center, whatever of fragment. And the, ours, the trick is the most trick. In our publication, all publications, we use we use the QROs to represent the double occupied single occupied virtual orbitals. Even though sometimes we localize, we put the trick together, we localize the the QROs. But for the spin couple pair, as I show you, copper diamond, we use the unrestricted corresponding orbitals. The rest of the things I, I use the same strategy, same trick to do that. One example I want to show that many Gertrude people who are working on the same project are hybrid and iron flux zone. Um, so you look at the, look like the colonial orbital, they are very delocalized, like the normal mode, they delocalize everywhere. It's very hard to identify the bounding from there. Once you use the QRO and even localize the QRO a little bit, and and then you can find a very good bounding. This this are four oxo. The exhaust structure you can draw with with your pencil, it's like very similar to the oxygen dioxygen. And you look at the, 
the OPZ autoinhibitors, DZ autoinhibitors, this is a sigma type of binding, and this is a this is antibody orbital and this is binding orbital. And then you have two P orbitals, oxygen P orbitals, inhabit with the D orbital in pi manner, so called. You form the two pi binding orbital, two antibody in pi orbital. And the rest of them, if this guy is DXYZ equatorial plan, they act with your, <coughs> your supporting ligand. In this case, we have a two sigma donor, so DXY is non binding and the sigma. And the x squared minus y squared and sigma antibody. That makes your chemical things very clear, right? This is, and then, and then another thing, okay, I forgot to mention that. This thing, based on this here, draw structure, you can figure out there are many, many pathways that may exist. You look at, once you reduce the metals, in the, and then you can get the electron here, 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 many things. And once you oxidize the metals, then you can come, this electron can come here. But for the iron form, also the, you, this is a strong oxidant and it's actually high valence of center. Okay, so there are many, many kind of electron acceptable by electron donor in the, in the transmission metal involving reactions. That makes the sense quite difficult. Maybe there's a feature, fantastic feature of the transmission metal chemistry. Okay. Another thing we may matter, and I don't know if you understand that, and the transition metal complex has a different spin state. Some, someone work here is a spin cost over system. And then, and then this indicates that the reaction may proceed on different potential energy surface. One example that we have studied in literature is the um, oxo atomic unit and the reaction to dihydrogen. The, the reactant and the product is, has the second ground state, second ground state, but the reaction turns out to <laughs> proceed on the contact ground, contact excited state surface. Because of the sector, so you have a strongly demanding barrier, but on you know, the contact surface, you have a low barrier, and at this point, you cross the surface. And then, and then in this particular reaction, and then the, the system needs to cross the surface twice. So first, it cross the uh, cortex surface, and then you come at this point back to the sector surface. And many things that is the let the let the let, let the Shanshin Shank and the Shen Hor Schwartz people to talk to propose so-called two state reactivity, multi-state reactivity concept. Okay. Okay. I have some time to talk about. Talk about our work on the search bond activation. Um, background is, um, as I talk about, high valent metals is uh, important, employed by biology in, in a series of iron enzyme to use a high valent center. For example, somebody talked about the PMMO here, and this is the SSMO, soluble maximum oxygenase. And another is use the, the, the diiron four center, uh, and then, um, we talk about it today. We have uh, mono iron set, maybe mono iron high valent iron, mono iron, mono nuclear iron four oxo center. And uh, many many things happened in last ten years. We we still did some work here, and then actually you can invention, you can imagine, you uh, enumerate all the possible pathways. And if you compare the reactant and the product, we start. We have. We will end at uh, half past twelve, right? Okay, that's okay. So, and then we start at iron four. So we end up with the iron three um, alcohol something. And this immediately tells you uh, the. So this is a two electron transfer process. This is a two electron <coughs> reduction of the iron center. That indicates two electron oxidation of the uh, alkene in the stage bound. And then in, based on this set, that is why I ask you to, to assign the correctly D electron number, D configuration on the metal center. That is this you can use here. And then there are two main two possible ways. One you have the Concerted pathway, one step transfer two electron, and then you have the stepwise pathway, and then you try, that is the way formulate. That's what I show you here. And then 
for the stepwise pathway, the first step we call usually in the literature we call HRT transfer. And, and then we form a high uh, ferric center bound to hydroferric uh, center and uh, united with the carbon radical. And then you rebound these two fragments, you generate the final product. The second step we call rebound, and actually you combine these two fragments. And your temporary intuition immediately tells you this step is definitely the, the hard step, it's really determined. Because the, from here to here, you have extremely high, <coughs> extremely high uh, driving force for reaction. Because you starting from uh, radical and general alcohol. And then, that is, it turns out, we calculate, every calculation believes that, that this is really determined, fit your calculation. And then one thing struck me a lot is the, the concerted pathway. And the barrier for the concerted pathway is extremely high, more than 20 kg more. And then, so this it has discussed in the literature for the last 10, 20 years, 30 years now. Because the first, uh, the first mechanism proposed by the Jacobs in the 1970s. And the, so we look at the system, this reaction actually, is, uh, when I talk about it's two electron oxidation over there of the CH bar. In this reaction, R4 center was the electron separator. And then make me see rather, um, make me see it's very unusual, it's oxygen actually function as a relay to transfer, to effect the electron transfer from the CH bar to R4 center. This is this is a this this kind of a, this kind of a proposed can try to imply try to tell you because the because this subject cannot directly interact with the arm center because you have the supporting link and that's a the steric effect does not allow your subject to attach to the arm center and um, the second question I, I asked myself at the beginning. And what, why is the concerted mechanism is so high, uh, has a so low, so high barrier and low reactivity? And then it turns out it's, it's a simple project, but then we end up with a lot of things. Um, we first understand, try to understand the reaction when the electron structure of reactant, that's what we discuss uh, the similar things in the, in, the, in the last section. I talk about this is the high speed arm four. We have a D four center things, right? And based on that, we can figure out the two at least two things. One is the electron separate orbital can be this three parts. Only can be this three because the oxygen related electron. Well, all the things that happen somewhere pass through electron, pass through the oxygen, and then. So the electron acceptor must come from some of these three orbitals that involve the FEO bonding or anti-bonding. Okay. So in, here after we describe the thing, the things that once the electro, once this pi star orbital serve as electron acceptor, we call this a pi pathway, and then this sigma anti-bonding orbital serve the electron acceptor, we, we call that as a sigma pathway. Based on, and uh, this is the uh, true thing. Actually, for this specific species, uh, we can expect two reaction pathways for the search bar activation. And then, I have, to, and then based on that, we can easily identify the key reaction coordinate that we want to talk about. Once you know the electron acceptor orbital is all the pi anti-bonding or pi or sigma anti-bonding with respect to the FEO interaction, so the FEO bond strength should elongation should be one of the key coordinates. That's one thing you can identify. That's what I talked about before. At the beginning, you, once you compare the joint structure, you figure out how the things work, and then you can somehow design your transition state geometry. Okay. And one thing, the last thing I want to point out, let you keep in mind is here. This is a, this is a, this is our our oxygen, oxygen sigma antibonding orbital d square. Here we have an, an, an intrinsic plane from the p orbital. Here we have the intrinsic 
uh, of uh, intrinsic node play of the P of uh, this is this the bonding the anti bonding because we have the node play here between the oxygen and oxygen P of and the D this square. Yeah. Because of the magic things happens, we analyze it, the draw stretch of transition state. The most the first things I found out a while, we have the three centered bonding, anti-bonding of the signal to what we found out in the mass oxidation by healthcare, by hydroxyl radical. This is this is a CHO3 bonding anti-bonding hormone. But in that case we found that that's a completely radical reaction, right? And then more, more fascinating things come from here. We look at carefully of the this D this square based orbital. We look at now, we look at the, so we change it from anti-bonding to bonding. This is a dramatic thing we found out. And then actually our predictions were pretty good. We in, in the you know, FE bound distance you get the you know, at the transition stage is significantly elongated. At the at the product we have one have a FU bound distance of one point six five angstrom, we elongated using point one angstrom. Yeah. So things makes things somehow fit out of chemical twist, but some, some things happen so very straight. One is suggest this is a radical reaction. Another thing is this 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 one this of the changing from from reaction to the Traditionally, they were changing from bonding to actual anti-bonding to bonding. Because now we, we have only the, this, this load of planes due to the intrinsic load of plane of the oxygen. So, we, we did that things. We did the so-called random surface scan of, of this FEO bound distance to recognize how the electrodes were changes along the, uh, with the FEO bound, strength, uh, bound distance. What we found out is somehow at the 1.65 angstrom, that is a, that's a clearly iron fox bound distance. So we found out that's a typical iron fox, so nothing, nothing special. But once we in a day, the heavy bound, we found out mm, actually is the, this guy, this bonding partner, <coughs> split into a pair. Why is oxygen? Why is iron based? And that is oxygen based. Somehow, this is the indicator the, the, these things. FEO bound hormonated cleavage. Um, this is actually related to the draw structure iron 4 because this bond is uh, extremely covalent. Like the HH bound in a dihydrogen molecule, once you cleave the elongate the HH bound for dihydrogen molecule, you will get the one and um, one carbon at one H atom on one side and another H atom on the other side. Is that true here? We found the same things here because the iron fox, iron four and the oxo, O2 minus bound is extremely covalent. So the bound is this bound cleavage is different from all the other transition metal donation bonds. And you think about it, if you have, uh, for example, hexoalkyl iron two, once you you try to elongate the FEO bound between the oxygen, uh, between the water and your iron center, you can get the water and iron 2 at the end. No one can tell you you can get iron 3 or iron 1 or, ox, ox, or water or water radical or something like that. But this is the case here. This, is a, this bond is very covalent. That is what we talk about. So this, so I, now I understand now the two things I point out here. One thing is that we generate, we, in this case, we generate oxygen radical, and this is radical impact with the search bond, so we form this, this, this so-called picture fingerprint of this action transfer. No one worked well. Okay, so I mean this one. And then in another another one we form the high <coughs> we form the iron center that we observe here. But all these two orbitals in virtue comes from the FEO bonding orbital. That is the same step. So this is a short story we just I feel. So as you expected maybe uh, your your three-centered sigma bonding orbital involved to the OH bond, you want the OH 
Oh, it's a Sigma Bunny of you, and then your anti bunny Swiss and anti bunny of you move to the cargo center radical. That all makes sense now. All the problem is that you have well, dramatic electricity changes during the reaction. This is. Um, now, for the, the things we just talked about it now, we have the two kinds of the reaction mode that can be envisioned as the, once you look at this electron structure. And the, the second layer of the complexity arises from this R4, so usually it has the triplet ground state. I to, I, but the triplet and the quintet ground state make, usually, as our calculation shows, is usually less than 5k. So the reaction may also take place along the, uh, on the triplet surface that we talk about. So we, in total, we have two kind of, uh, two kind of uh, reaction pathway on each surface and the times two where two kinds of reaction pathway can follow. In, in total we have four different reaction pathway. Um, okay, that is a, I, I draw the electron transfer diagram here. That is the way we talk about just now we talk about this guy. We move the electron from the D D square and then you can also also on the trade contact the surface and then you can move the electron into this guy, pi star. This is a, this is a called the pi of track pathway or the sigma pathway and then on the third contact sur uh, triplet surface you have both too as well. Uh, in total we have four. And then we 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 push ourselves really a lot to try to enumerate all the pathways and the located transition state and then compare the, the reactivity between these four pathways. That's what we did. We, we take a very simple system as a pen R, um, M, and me, R4, or oxo, and we activate the acid. This is, eventually, we, in this kind of a case, you need to design your transition state geometry. This is not a trivial thing. You need a lot of effort. Because, as you know, on the, now let us, for, for the triplet sigma, because they have a lower barrier, and then, but once you want to locate the transition state for the quantity pi, because you have a lower state not available, and you are trying to find something that better, because this guy is much better than this guy, of course, then low energy, right? And then, and then you have to cheat the all a little bit, and then try to find that way. So this is most very trivial things. And, and then, yes, you need so you need to have a good feeling about your transition state geometry. You run a several step of the or scan and then find out. And then I'm going to talk about how to design this in, 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 in two minutes. Okay. And then we find out the trip, the quintet, the quintet, on the quintet, the sigma pathway is favorable, and the triplet pathway is pi pathway is favorable, and then another pathway. I have. Um, and then in this case, yes, this gives a so kind of solid background, solid basis for the true state of reactivity that is proposed by thousands of people. Yeah. And um, but I, I first things I want to compare, I let you uh, let us compare the reactivity of the quintet sigma and the triplet pi pathway. And um, I have uh, several reasons to believe that sigma pathway is more reactive. There, one reason is that. So we know from our understanding the the the, the optimal geometry for the subtract attack is a so-called um, vertical attach, vertical approach. You let the switch band approach FEO all units on the top. Because you have you have you have generated all oxygen P or oxygen radical on, on the P Z orbital in this direction, right? And then, and then, but once you have a pi pathway, you generate a radical on the on the OP x or PY orbital. You you like the horizontal attack. You want to make this kind of because you your oxygen P orbital is this way. You have this way. You have to attach the approach your substrate in a horizontal way. In the sigma pathway you have to you have to attach the FEO uh, attach the FEO unit and on the top along from the top. And then, so this is what I draw here. You have a different attached pathway. That is what I saw. But you can design, the, you can figure out your geometry of the transition state. 
but just basic, basis on this kind of electronic understanding. And then, now you know, this, this kind of optimal geometry cannot be true because you, you have a very strong stability effect there. This is a repower, does not allow your, your subject to attach on the 90 degree. I mean the FE, FEO's edge, that's about the max this way, because you have very strong stability effect on the supporting beam. And then we found, that is true, we found out this FEO edge angle is close to 120. Yeah, that means you have, you don't have the, you don't, in a triplet signal pathway, a triplet pi pathway, you, your optical induction is very weak, because you don't have the optimal geometry. And then you have, you have, a, you're subject to a very, very large static effect, because you approach the system, on, this is your, <laughs> this is your supporting approach on, on the top. And then, but your, but your sigma pathway approaches the signal from directly up, up here. And then you have, so your power repression, as I talked about just now, is this correspond to the steric effect. So your sigma pathway has a small steric power, and, and then the optimal geometry for your optimal, well, optimal geometry for your optimal impaction. And in these two cases, yes. And then, yes, I, yes, I definitely favor the sigma pathway, of course. Right? And then, one, one question we, we think about at the beginning, another thing that you have to think about. Uh, here, you, once you, you transfer the electron to in some pi star, right? and then you cleave this half pi bound. You have, you look at, you have, uh, you, you have a bonding, you, your bonding object has occupied by two electrons, and then your antibody are already occupied by one electron. You have a half pi bound here, and then you, once you compare with the sigma pathway, you completely break the sigma bound. As you know, the sigma bound is much stronger than the sigma bound, uh, the pi bound, this chemically that makes sense. And then we found out, we, we did the relic surface scan, we found out, actually, from this, transfer this electron is, is favored by the half field DC, because in this case you form the uh, high spin DR, high spin R3 set, and uh, half field DC stabilize this kind of configuration. So actually, Transfer the electron to here and to here only, this only difference by one kick up more. That's what we talk about. The, the, you have a larger of the spin polarization on the transition state. That is something that people talk about. It's trying to enhance the reactivity. <laughs> OK. Uh, oh, I have time to still talk about some of our work. Thank you. Um, and then recently, we, we extend our work to to, success, to systematic study reactivity of high valence center. That is, we talk about one talk about with you about how four, five, six, and also nitrile compound. And maybe most of we special people know that story. And then we also want to study the the the, the edge atom transfer reactivity of this serious compound. One thing may, maybe in most of our, maybe most of the will believe is that because this is this reaction is clearly as oxid is a stage bound oxidation. Once you go to the high oxidation state the electron, and then the electro the electron affinity of the high valence, for example, six iron six is much higher than iron four. That's clearly right. And then you, you believe that the reaction will, will get even faster and faster once you increase the oxidation state on our center. That's, that's now. It's not to be true. That, this is what we found out here. Yes, iron 4. Iron 4 oxo really follow this kind of. Iron 4 oxo. Iron 4, 5 oxo really follow this trend. Once you go to the. Once you increase the. The increase the oxidation state of our center, yes, the reactivity gets higher and higher. That makes sense because the electron affinity gets higher and higher. And then once we don't understand clearly is the iron nitrile compound, once we go to the once we increase the iron oxidation state, we observe the opposite trend. Even the iron six we haven't haven't succeeded in locate the transition but it's transition state, but the barrier is extremely higher. So we think we can follow that. And so we, I summarize what we have here, and our oxo is, is much more reactive than our nitrile compound. 
and then iron, iron oxo command follows the theory, the reactivity of iron oxo, or iron oxo follows the usually chemical set, chemical trend of the electron affinity, and then I try to that we don't know. One thing we did then, this is, um, we, we first analyzed the drug first, that's the very uh, polemic, pretty simple, yeah, that, that's a talk, talk at the beginning. Baby, baby, uh, I was planning for example. Yeah, we we plot the reaction driver force and uh, then and then the barrier. This is the driving force and the barrier. We found a very good linear combination. Yeah, that means in this particular system, this, this principle really works. That's not all. That's a And then we will go one step further because we believe. Hydrogen atom transfer is a kind of a special kind of a proton coupling energy transfer. And then, the, once we know the driving force makes the sense, and then, and then we can, this, we can, first we calculate the bond dissociation, bond dissociation energy of that OH or NH bond, and then we divide the, this, bond, this strength into the electron part and the proton part. That is what we saw about it. We calculate the so called electron affinity. There's a bounded dissociation energy of this guy, and then it's equal to the electron affinity of, of the F E, high weight F E, oxo nitrile compound, and then the proton affinity of the one electron reduced for this guy. That's what we, we decompose into two parts. And then this, that, that makes dramatic difference. And for the iron, iron oxo series, we found out the EA, this is a blue corner, that's dominant over the proton, proton affinity. That is this, this three guys. And then for the nitrile, we found the proton affinity dominant over, that is this one, this way, dominant over the EA. So that's given the, this gives the trend like what we observed in the CH1 activation. Okay. We have published already. Okay, that make me happy, and then I have time to talk about otherwise our section. And then, uh, now I, I think I talk to, I try to convince you of one thing. The switch bond activation by this iron 4 oxo can be interpreted as a metal mediated radical reaction. This is nothing special, just uh, very similar to a hydroxyl reaction with, uh, with methane. And then, the, the special case, the feature of this reaction is the, is the covalent bond of, between the iron oxo, the high valent iron oxo masks the character, character, radical character of oxy at the beginning of the reaction. So the, the, the reaction is something like the way first generation kind, kind of can be interpreted with first generated oxy and then right, there's oxy reacting with the CH bond. And then, and then we, I think if I explain to you the quantum sigma pathway is much more efficient than any of other things, by far the most efficient pathway is the CH bond activation. And the different reactivity of this kind of a high momentum oxo and nitrate series have been elegant and rather correlated with the driving force of the reaction, this kind of thing. Mm. Now I come to the first question I raised in this, section, in this subsection about the why the conservative the oxygen insertion pathway has so high, has a extremely demanding barrier? The case that you, if you believe what I'm going to interpret at the beginning is right, and then you can immediately follow that in this uh, special case, you want to transfer two electrons, you want to accept two electron, and then it means you will ask the ox. O2 minus oxo ligand transfer into so called oxygen species. You have and the OPG. You need the alpha hole and the beta hole on the oxygen atom to generate, to get these two electrons from the CH bar. And you can imagine, you can imagine that this, this is a very demanding energetic constant process and then eventually, yes, that's making the, this barrier extremely high. And then you can maybe ask the question how about the um, for example, per manganate reactivates the CH. We per manganate reactivates the somehow like the prefer the CH bound activation. Yeah, it's true. It follows the same reaction. 
hybrid data, hybrid the meta center follows this kind of presumably very funny reaction, like eventually is radical reaction, the generation oxyo radical. But the, for the permanent per, per population in the literature of now, follow this kind of thing. Okay, so far so good. And then I, this is the last talk of the, this meeting, and the subscribe have to see something about the closing remark, something like the first thing I, I strongly look, suggest all of you people looking at the electron structure. The electrons, we, we believe their reactivity and the electron structure are intimately linked. Looking at the structure, get the chemical insight into the electron structure, and then that helps help you do smart thinking. Yeah. And then, how to understand this is a kind of a closing remark for, for, for all of the sections in this summer school. And for specific for my section, I, I we propose some different way to look to think about the reactivity. First thing is we, we locate the transition state and uh, and think about uh, which which pathway is more favorable, like like most people have done in the literature. And then we we analyze the draw structure along the reaction pathway reactant to the transition state and the even product. And then we figure out the electron transfer diagram. And based on that, we can somehow get an idea how to design the transition state geometry and so on and so forth. And then we can somehow even make a crazy idea to evaluate all the pathways like that. Once we know the electron transfer part, you have some transfer diagram. And that is, a, so the way is, a, I suggest to map the electron structure along this this transaction trajectory, and then you can somehow validate how you have some transfer take place and figure out how the reaction takes place. Yeah. Okay, let's just bring to the end of my talk, and then I I have some time for the for your question, and then before that, um, I need in addition to our organization committee, I, I have to thank my team. I, 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 the reason I'm extremely busy on all my things is uh, did my co-work. I, I just uh, talked about something here, and then most of the slides is provided by my team, especially Basque did a lot of work, and then I just designed this exercise and all the things he made for me in class. And then Panda kind of, uh, kind of test all the, all the exercises before we come here. And then I want we have I need I have two minutes I use two minutes to advise my section and then I can give you a, at least ten minutes for the discussion of you can ask me whatever you want to ask. Okay, the first thing oh the basic reason for that is I have my my team asked me to do that to do so and then the second very important I make a jumble with my one of my colleagues which about which section has more people. <laughs> okay. Uh, but actually we we spend some time uh, squeeze squeezing our brain to to make some good exercises that you can you can learn from uh, from the, this kind of a two hours practical section. The first thing is we ask you to look at the home and the loop of the CO2 to figure out which one, which carbon, central carbon or terminal oxygen is the favorite reaction site for the clofenic carbon on the CO2. And then we, we have designed, we have designed, uh, we have the design exercises ask you to look at the kinetic orbital and localized orbital. You can, you can know the trick there, how to look at it. For example, acid, and you can identify pi bound sigma bound. And then the third one, the second exercise is somehow very classical. I will ask you to locate the transition state of the CH4 oxidation by hydroxyl radical and calculate the kinetic isotope. I haven't spent a lot of time on it because I believe the, the boss, Fran, has talked about it a lot. And then, and this is how to look, how to use the OCA to locate the transition state. And then the third one, we, we move to a very difficult to understand the bonding of a transition metal complex. That is what we talk about in the second subsection. And then, and also we, we have some examples to let you 
非常的有所方向嘛，那个 orbital 的 signal bound 是。You like you like to finish assistance to the nucleophilic attack, as we discussed. Uh, you add the Lewis acid speed up to the nucleophilic attack on to the carbon network. And then I think I have done. I can I I leave the time to you, and then you can ask me any question, whatever I want. Thank you.